Hi guys, my name is Megan from the blog WilsonHomestead.com and today I want to teach you how to make laundry soap with horse chestnuts. This is like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Normally you wouldn't use horse chestnuts for anything because they're poisonous to eat. So I had no idea you could do anything with them. I thought they would just get thrown out or composted or whatever, but you can actually make soap with conkers. I'm just a little bit obsessed with foraging for things to use in my home or for cooking or cleaning or whatever. It just makes my thrifty heart so happy. I don't know if it's because we're saving so much money by me going out with my children. We're having a good time out in nature, gathering up all these conkers or what, but I just really enjoy it. Something about it is just so satisfying. I feel like every time I find something like this that's kind of self-sufficient, they're just going to grow on the tree and a lot of people don't use them, so they're kind of just free for the taking. It just makes me feel more and more confident in that we're prepared for stuff. The more we have a really good food storage, the more knowledge I'm gaining about how to preserve food, make our own house products, cleaning products. Like all of this just makes me feel like we're ready for stuff to happen. All the knowledge and supplies we have. So we are today literally going to make our own liquid soap out of horse chestnuts. It's crazy. Again, it is poisonous, so make sure you don't eat them or accidentally let your children grab some off the table and eat them or drink the liquid soap. It's not for eating. It's just for cleaning stuff. <laughs> So fall is the time to gather these. It's fall right now, so hopefully I'm getting this video out on time that you guys could gather some and at least try it. Whenever you find a horse chestnut tree in the fall time, they will just be laying on the ground, like a ton of them laying on the ground under the chestnut tree. We recently had a big windstorm and I went out to harvest more chestnuts and I gathered like two five gallon buckets full from one tree. I just kept going. I would keep walking around and around the tree and I was just like, oh my gosh, there's more and there's more. There's just so many under there. So. You really only need to know of one tree, and that should be plenty for your family. There's a really, really big tree in our neighbor's property, and I asked them if I could gather up the chestnuts. They probably thought it was a little weird, but they gave me permission. So that is all the chestnuts that I can get from that tree are all we'll need. I haven't even get, gotten all of them, and I think we have plenty, so they do produce a lot. So I've gone out about four or five times this year to gather stuff, to gather chestnuts. And I have probably around 600 nuts at this point. I fill up my one gallon buckets that used to be for coconut oil and I counted and it seems like if I could fit about 100 in each bucket. And I had six buckets so I'm estimating about 600. <laughs> Hopefully that'll be enough for our family this year but you just kind of got to see, you just got to see what happens the first year and then you'll know what to get next year. So the first step is to deshell them. A lot of them will already be out of the shells because when they fall on the ground a lot of them break. But the ones that are still in their spiky shells, you're gonna have to take off these scary looking shells. I would recommend wearing gloves because you should learn from my mistakes. I didn't. And after shelling a couple hundred, my hands were pretty sore. to crush them up or grind them. So I tried several different methods with this. The smaller that you're able to grind or crush them, the less that you'll need to use in soap. So ideally, it'd be best to use the method that gets them the smallest because then you don't have to use as much, then you have to gather as much every year. So the first method that I tried, and it's probably still my favorite method, is using a blender. We have a really nice like $100 Ninja blender and it does a really good job. I've blended probably half of the chestnuts that I've gathered this year and I don't see any, any dents or wear on the blades. They still feel really sharp. If I put too much of the conkers in there, it's, it, it's too much for a deterrent so the motor will kind of like stop but I'll just fill it up a little ways, like not a lot. Otherwise, you're gonna wear out your motor. If you get a really cheap one, this might only last through one season, so, but if you have a really nice high quality blender like we have, it should do just fine. It does freak me out a little bit because we don't really have the money to buy another blender, but just from the batches that I've done, it seems to be doing really, really well. I have been really impressed. So even if you have to buy a cheap blender every couple of years to do this, it's probably worth the time it saves 
with how fast it is to blend it because the other methods take a lot longer like especially for how many conquers that I have to grind every year it's a little ridiculous so the next method that I tried is to use a knife this is obviously a little more risky you really gotta make sure you keep them fingers out of the way but I would kind of just chop them in half and then in quarters and then after that it was easier to just chop them in as, as small as pieces as you can without it taking a ridiculous amount of time so you can see how this would take like a lot longer than the blender. You can just chop them up in fourths and you just gotta make sure they're dried really good or you have to use them right away. It's just a little harder to get all the moisture out of them if they're in quarters. And I definitely don't have the patience to use a knife on all these. Like, that's just, it's just a little excessive. <laughs> but if you're only doing a little bit, if you're just one person or you're just doing it, try it. A knife is definitely a good way to go. The next method is to use a hammer. You can wrap like maybe five to 10 nuts in a tea towel and use a hammer and hold the towel with one hand on the table and go to town with the hammer. This is a little faster than the knife method, but it's not as fast as the blender. You just wanna make sure you're using a towel that you don't really care about because it might get ripped. So, you know, you gotta wait. Just use a rag or something for this. I also tried crushing them with a big T-post pounder. I had Luke go out to our chicken coop and get our big, huge, heavy T-post pounder and I put a bunch of conkers in the bottom of a five gallon bucket and I just went to town smashing them with the T-Post powder. It worked decently. I'm not a huge fan of the, these methods because they just take a lot of energy and they definitely don't go as fast as the blender, but I was still able to dehydrate them pretty well with using those, those methods. So it is a really good option. And it's also really nice to know that you can do that like if you ever have the power out or something and you really just need to get this done. So. Those are all the methods that I tried, and I definitely, the blender definitely won. It's just so fast and easy. But you can try them all for yourself and see which one works best for you. The next step is to dehydrate them. Of course, you can skip this step if you're gonna use them fresh fast enough. If you leave them in the shell, they'll last for a couple months. They'll last a little longer if you put them in the refrigerator, but I use this for our soap all year, so I dehydrate what we need for the year. So there's two methods for this that I really like. The first one is to just use a dehydrator. You can lay some parchment or wax paper out on the dehydrator trays. Some dehydrators come with actual like mats to lay down so that if you're dehydrating something small, it doesn't fall through the cracks. But for that dehydrator over there, it doesn't have any trays that come with it, so I would lay down some parchment paper. hydrator over here has a temperature control and so if this one over here doesn't so I don't have to worry about that but if you have one that has a temperature control I I like to set it between like 140 and 160 degrees the next method is to use the oven I've been using my two dehydrators so much for apples that I use the oven for the conkers right now once the apples are done I'll finish up the conkers using both the dehydrators and the oven just because I like to just get it done all at once I don't want them to go bad I just want it to get done so I actually I have two cookie sheets and two casserole dishes in the oven with these ground conkers I'm trying to get as many done as I can I actually had some still in the shell I actually had some mold because I've taken so long so I'm really trying to get them done before they go bad because it would be such a bummer to have wasted all that time gathering them. But you just put your oven to the lowest temperature it will go to. I put, mine only goes down to 170 and that's fine. A lot of people say for dehydrating other food items, you would just turn on the oven light. But I find for conkers, it really is fine. if Even if they get a little bit burned, it still does seem to make soap just fine. So I like to just set it at the lowest temperature the oven will go to. And then you're just gonna keep an eye on them, both in the oven and in the dehydrator. I keep an eye on them and I just go by and stir them with my hand a little bit so they dehydrate evenly. So you'll kind of know when they're done, they're gonna feel a little crispy. You'll really just get a feel for it once you do it a couple times, but you wanna just make sure you get all the moisture out. They'll kind of look like granola, except a little bit more crispy than you get granola, but it really, really reminds me of granola. And actually the first time I made a batch, Luke came home and he totally thought I was making granola for him. He was sadly disappointed that he could eat them. I definitely lean more towards having them a little more overdone than underdone, just because I, I really don't want these to go bad when I'm storing them for a year. So the key to storing these for a long time is to drain all the moisture. That is what's gonna make them go bad and mildew and mold. So definitely if you're not sure 
if they're done, lean a little bit more towards overdone than underdone. This isn't true for all dehydrated things. If you're doing some more food item stuff like apples, you want to be a little bit more particular. But with this, I've I've done some burn a burn batch and and not burn batch, and it seems to like make soap kind of evenly. So I haven't noticed a huge difference with it. So you really don't have to worry about it too much. So now let's talk about storage. With proper storage, these will last up to a year. So I want to store these really well so they last until next fall when I can harvest, start harvesting my next batch. I store mine in a five gallon bucket with a gamma seal on so it's nice and airtight. I actually threw in about three little rice bags to absorb any extra moisture that I might have missed. If I didn't quite get enough moisture out, it just gives me a little peace of mind because this was a lot of work and I don't want it to go bad. So I actually just put one in the bottom and then I fill it up. I put one in the middle and I put one on the top. As I filled it, I just added. So there's like three rice bags in there. I probably don't need that many, but it just gives me a little peace of mind. I like to know that it's less likely that it'll go bad. And then I just put my big bucket upstairs Upstairs is our food storage room and our supplies and all that stuff. So that's where I store the big bucket. And then I have a little ceramic canister that I keep down in the laundry room that when it's empty, I'll go refill it with the big bucket. But it's nice to have some in the laundry room for just, because I do laundry like every day. I don't want to have to go upstairs every time I do laundry. Now we're to the part where we're actually gonna start making our liquid soap. So if you skipped the dehydrating step and you're just gonna try this out with a little batch of freshly ground conkers, you follow the same steps. It's gonna be the same either way for dehydrated or fresh. But yeah, either way, I scoop about a quarter cup of the ground conkers into a Pyrex measuring cup. I like to use my two cup glass measuring cup because then I can easily measure in the water. It's just really convenient and I have a set of three of those so it's not a huge deal if I have one just living in the laundry room from, from now on. Your measuring doesn't have to be super precise, it's just approximately a quarter cup and then you're gonna pour in two cups of hot water. I just use as hot of water as I can get out of the tap, which is 122 degrees from our instant hot water heater. You can boil water and pour it in there. It's not gonna damage it. It'll actually help it infuse a little faster, the hotter it is. So a quarter cup of the ground conkers to two cups of water. So it's really nice and easy to remember. So if they're more finely ground, like how they would be in the blender, you only have to soak them for 30 minutes. But if they're like quartered, like if you use a knife and you only quartered them, they're gonna have to soak overnight. For such big chunks, they just need a lot of time to release all the soap properties. With how scatterbrained I can tend to be, I definitely need to have them finely ground so that I only have to soak them for 30 minutes because sometimes that's even hard enough remembering to start them half an hour before you're gonna start laundry. There's no way I would remember the whole, the whole day before. So once it's set for the correct amount of time for how big your grounds are, I'm just gonna actually pour it through a little strainer into my washer. So I'm just gonna pour it straight into there. You wanna make sure you strain out the ground bits because especially if you have a newer washer, it's gonna ruin it. And then that is it. You just wash your load like you would normally with any other soap. You do whatever washing cycle you, you normally use. <laughs> so this is just, it's kind of a long process, but once you get them all prepped and all dry, all ground up, dehydrated, all that stuff, it's like, really quite easy to make the soap every day. You can make a double or triple batch and have some ready to go. They'll last in the refrigerator for about a week. So you wanna make sure that you don't make too much that it's gonna start going to bat, going bad, because that would be sad to waste some. But you really only have to do this whole huge process once a year. Just every fall, there's gonna be kind of a big process of making your conquer soap again and having it for the rest of the year. But that's totally doable. I mean, this is canning season anyway, so it's kind of, I'm just really, really busy all the time anyway. So it's not really a huge deal to have something a little extra. I've even washed my kids' cloth diapers with this soap and it actually works really well. Hey. I have another recipe for a powdered laundry detergent on my YouTube channel that I will link below if you guys are interested. That is what I've used for our clothes and their cloth diapers up until recently, but now I've even switched over their cloth diapers to the Conquer soap. I still have my powdered laundry detergent, my homemade powdered laundry detergent on hand in case I don't, I didn't soak the stuff 30 minutes beforehand, so it's nice to have it as a backup. I have really, really been enjoying this. It's just amazing how much it actually does look like soap. It actually foams on the top. If you put it in a bottle and shake it up, it'll foam. And all the clothes come out smelling really good. It is, doesn't have much of a smell, 
So they kind of come out smelling unscented but clean and they look very clean too. So hopefully you guys find this video helpful and let me know if you tried this. If you make a batch of soap, tag me in a post on Instagram. I would absolutely love to see how many other people are doing this. But thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in my next one. Bye.